Good morning, boys and girls of primary grade one, two. I'm so happy you're able to join me this week as we learn about lesson 34 in the Faithful to All His Promises series that we're doing this year. And interestingly, the theme of today's lesson is also Faithful to All His Promises. So that's kind of fun. My name is Mr. Daniel, for those of you who don't know me or have forgotten. Isn't this cute? We have a little picture of a baby. It says, hello, I'm Abigail Grace. April 11, that's her birthday. Seven pounds, three ounces, welcomed by John and Joy. What do you think this is? What it is, is a birthday announcement. A birthday announcement is like a postcard. Now, why do people send these? Well, they send them to tell their family and friends that a baby's been born and to give them a picture if they haven't been able to meet the baby yet. How do you think parents feel when they're sending these birthday announcements? Yeah, you bet. They feel excited and happy. And what about the people who receive them? The same. They also feel excited and happy. Today's Bible story that we'll be looking at includes a birth announcement, and a baby, a special baby, is born. Before we launch into it, let's start with an opening prayer. Take your hands, put them together, bow your head, and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all the children in Primary 1 and 2 at the Met and any other children and their families who are able to watch this lesson. I pray that you'll be with them that you'll open their hearts and ears to hear this message that you are faithful to all your promises. And I pray that you'll be with me as I teach. Amen. So let me ask you a question. What if a married couple had to wait for 25 years for that baby I showed you on the first page? Hmm. What would they do? Now, is 25 years a long time to wait for a baby? You might not know. And I'll tell you, it is. When I got married, I waited one year to have a baby. Some people might wait two or five or 10. But 25 years is a very long time to be married and not have a baby. Well, guess what? I know a couple that waited 25 years to have a baby. And they named their baby Laughter. Let's learn about it. This is that couple. Their name is Abraham and Sarah. And their baby's name is Isaac, which means laughter. Now, you probably recognize this family because they're in the Bible. And if they had to make a birthday announcement, I think it would look something like this. It would say, Isaac, welcomed with love by Abraham, age 100, and Sarah, age 90. Isaac, which means laughter, was born in a tent in the desert after a 25-year wait. God is faithful to all his promises. He can do anything. So this is obviously a made up birth announcement. Uh, I don't think way, way back then, Abraham and Sarah would have, would have had postcards and that they could print and send. But there's some very interesting information on here, like how old they were and what his name means and how God was so faithful. So why don't we look in the Bible, which is the source of God's truth that we can look at and see exactly what it says about this amazing story. If you were to turn to the very first book in the Bible, it's called Genesis, and look in chapter 12, verse two, you would see this. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Now this, was a promise that God made to Abraham. 
It's the promise that starts our whole story off. But guess what? When God made this promise to Abraham, he and his wife, Sarai, actually, he made the promise to Abram. Okay, they had a different name at the beginning. Abram and his wife, Sarai, were already pretty old. So to receive a promise that he would be the head of a great nation, well, it was a little bit surprising because a nation is many people and he had no children yet. So he must have been thinking, how can I produce this nation? I need to have some sons. I need to have some kids, some daughters, and they have to have kids and grandkids and great grandkids. Is that even possible? Well, it is. In Genesis 15, verses 5 and 6, God again talked to Abraham. He said, sorry, the Bible says, and he brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. So God is effectively telling Abraham, you're going to have so many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and descendants. It's going to be like the stars in the sky, uncountable. And even though Abraham and his wife are old, he believed God. Here's a beautiful picture of stars in the sky. You can just imagine Abram looking up and saying, I'm going to have that many descendants? Amazing. Here's a picture of Abram. Now, to show how true it was, God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. So that's why we usually call him Abraham, because that was the name that he took at the end. And Sarai. Her name was changed to Sarah, which means the mother of nations. That's a pretty appropriate name if you're going to create a complete nation. And in Genesis 17:19, after they had waited many years and started doubting maybe that God would produce this child and they could make a nation, God spoke to them. God said, "No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. So God is making a very important promise here. Sarah will have a son. God will establish a covenant, a contract, a promise with him, an everlasting covenant. Hmm. So we have God's promise that Sarah will have a son, but what happened? Let's see. Well, first Abraham and Sarah waited, but there was still no son. So then they waited some more, but still no baby. They grew from 65 to 70, 75, 80. They waited even longer, but still no baby. After 25 years since God had made that promise recorded in the Bible, Abraham was up to 100 years old and Sarah was 90. But wait, that's too old to have children. Would God be faithful and fulfill this promise? Let's see. Genesis 21. So we started in chapter 12 and now we're in chapter 21. What happened? The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. So he made sure she became pregnant. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who had been born to him, who Sarah had bore, Isaac. Now we're going on to verse 5 and to 7. 
Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. So God had made her happy. And everyone who hears the story should be happy. And she said, who would have said to Abraham and Sarah that they would nurse a child? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. So this story is showing how amazing it is. Sarah is saying, can you believe it? You know, who could have possibly imagined this? This reminds me of Psalm 145, verse 13b, which is a much later book in the Bible. And it says, the Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. Wow. Let's recap the story. Abraham's name became Abraham, which means father of many nations. Sarai's became Sarah, mother of many nations. God made them a promise. And even though it seemed impossible he could fulfill it because they waited and became so old, he did fulfill it by giving them a son, Isaac. Isaac had two sons, you'll find out if you keep reading the Bible. And their names were Jacob and Esau. And here's a picture of Jacob. He's in the green and his 12 sons. Now, if you've been attending faithfully each week, you've heard about one of those sons because we've been talking about him a lot this past month or so. That's this one. It's Joseph. He was the one with the coat of many colors who ultimately moved to Egypt and saved the entire Israelite population. And here is the nation. These are the Israelites. It's the nation that started with Abraham and Sarah and grew and grew and grew. And it includes Jesus and it continues to this day. Here's a picture of it in a family tree format. You have Abraham and Sarah at the top, then Isaac, Jacob and Esau, Jacob's children, and the bottom where it says the nation of Israel, that's just the generation upon generation upon generation of God's everlasting covenant to the descendants of Isaac. Well, that's the lesson for today. And the take-home point for you is that God is faithful to all his promises. We're learning about 40 promises this year in our class, but there are hundreds of promises in the Bible for you to discover and rely upon. Here's the memory verse. It's from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 8. It's an easy one, and I'll read it, and you try to memorize it with me. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Now, withers means to dry up. So grass can dry up and die. Flowers can lose their petals and fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. An amazing promise. Let's close with a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for creating us and loving us and for giving us so many wonderful promises. And we thank you for being faithful to each and every one of them. I, I wish that all the children watching and their families will have a wonderful week. Amen. Well, that's it for me this week. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.